Cage Match is a bit mistitled, but it remixes a lot of cool lore for a sort of origin tale that combines elements of Mortal Kombat X, MK4, and even MK Mythology Sub-Zero. And I will admit, a prequel focused on Johnny Cage wasn't high in my wish list, but it's long overdue for one of the most popular and enduring characters in the series. And the movie is a ton of fun while being pretty good. I have been loving these MK Legends movies. Snowblind I just rewatched and it improved for me all the way to 4 stars when I had it initially at 3.5 stars for mostly faltering, for rushing some to story and lore decisions, and really uneven animation. Now, MK1 kind of canonizes all the lore issues I had, so it's actually a really good movie. And Cage Match kind of improves those animations issues from Snowblind and largely looks good, but there's still something off around the heavily outlined characters. Not as bad as the DC Tomorrowverse movies, that reminds me of Archer, but they're finding a balance at last, at least two. And when I say that there are deep cut characters, I mean it. I even had to Google who some of them were, and I love that from mythologies that I haven't ever finished who has. That and is not afraid to lean on the lore for random characters or plot elements and chooses to have fun with all of that. Now, from here on out, some big spoilers will follow. And what I'm talking about here is casting Jennifer Grey in the film was hilarious as herself, and it seemed like a big stunt grab for the movie to really highlight that 80s vibe, but the film plays with this expectation and shockingly not only makes her evil, but she's Serena. What the what? I did not see that coming and it blew me away. There's many other characters that pop in and out too, fast. Ashra's a little underserved, but fun, and, and to stand out is Johnny's assistant Chuck, who, in another great twist, becomes mocap. I love how expansive the MK lore is and that they choose to really delve into that and lean on that for the story. However, I'm beginning to be convinced that Shinnok can't maintain his status as a big bad that's interesting. Quan Chi is far more menacing, and as a prequel, this fails Shinnok as he was one of the issues also in Battle of the Realms, which I loved, but this does nothing to further him. He shows up in a brawl again in the last 20 minutes again and just wants to end things again. They really need to do a movie or some kind of story about his fall from grace as an elder god before they do his return. Give him some context and some dimension other than darkness. I want to end things. I don't know what I sounded like Batman right then. Johnny Cage himself is as fun as ever and Joel McHale does a great job. There's an extremely loose reason to explain his mystical green powers again. It's less throwaway than how MKX did it, but it's used in the same way and glossed over way too fast still. Like Johnny himself, nothing is taken too seriously and the film is concerned primarily in having fun first and foremost. This does wonders with a vibing soundtrack and Johnny contrasting well with the darker elements of the MK universe. But on the other hand, there's no real emotional tension to invest you in the characters or story beyond likable fans favorites. There's a moment you think they will, and it's played for laughs again, which is frustrating. I could have gone for a more honest look at why Johnny is how he is and how the persona protects his fears. In fact, sometimes this whole movie feels like a movie about Johnny, made by Johnny, but it's not. But it feels like it. It's okay to have serious moments in an otherwise goofy and fun film. I do love that they open with a scene from Ninja Mine. I've said for years that they need to open an MK movie with a bunch of Johnny Cage movie trailers. It would be amazing. Do that with Carl Urban, please. The action, when it comes, is supremely entertaining. And there's lots of gore, although tame by comparison to the previous few movies. However, I wanted more action. With Johnny Cage action superstar, I expected more genuine fighting from the guy and all around. But Ashra gets the bulk of it. It's cool for her, but it's a disappointment considering the title of the film. There is some clever commentary on Hollywood moguls in the industry as well. There's a joke made about writers that feels a little too close to home for some, dealing with how the industry sees and treats writers. But the writers made that joke, so it's probably just a quick thing that's painfully honest in how they feel. There's even a more clever one made about actors and unions that feels all too timely, but got a laugh out of me. Some really great jokes about nameless big directors and how there's a giant conspiracy that the whole industry is run by Satanists. We're here, the Brotherhood of Shadow. It's just bonkers in the best of ways and kinda makes you think. All in all, it sort of leads into Scorpion's Revenge, even though that movie kinda has Johnny being like, all of this, I'm dumb. But there's a that's it feeling I couldn't quite shake. I was whelmed, I had a good time, it was fun, I laughed and enjoyed it thoroughly, and I loved how it played fast and loose with the lore by honoring it with deep cuts, and yet the film simultaneously offers almost nothing new we haven't seen before, and is too afraid of the action. It's more concerned with how many F-bombs it can fit in its script, which is just frustrating to me. They feel improv by actors trying to give a more edge, and if they're written in there, respectfully, do better. Shinnok is rushed, and really shouldn't have been Johnny's first villain he faces, and Raiden is here for two seconds, but doesn't help with the Shinnok battle, and doesn't approach Johnny immediately, just... 
there's just some logic issues there. I would happily rewatch it, but it's easily the weakest of these movies so far. However, I'm glad it was made and they had an obvious amount of fun doing so. It knows what it is and never looks away. Somehow achieving the status of being a fresh bag of chips with a great smell, tasting a tad stale, yet it knows it goes great with queso. And it never tries to be more. RIP to Gilbert Gottfried in his final film role. That was a nice little surprise. Now, make MK vs. DC or give us a Shajinko Deception movie. It is time. I give Mortal Kombat Legends Cage Match 3.5 out of five stars. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in more Mortal Kombat content I've covered, check out my first review, maybe a second coming later, right here for Snowblind. And remember, always look for the good.